Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, and today we're going to do a breakdown for tr uh, the first uh, trailer for The Mandalorian Season 2. And uh, we have some returning cast members coming back from the first season, obviously. So we have uh, Pedro Pascal, who plays The Mandalorian himself. Uh, we also have Gina Carano and Carl Weathers coming back to play their respective characters. Um, and uh, we have a few new characters as well. We'll be seeing the return of Boba Fett and I believe also Ahsoka Tano. Uh, so... There's a lot of kind of interesting stuff going on right now with this, and the trailer doesn't really give us a lot of insight into the season, which I think is a good thing. I don't think you want to give away the twists and turns and everything like that of what's going to happen, um, especially since it's so close to coming out. It's uh, coming out on October 30th, so only a little over a month, uh, only a little uh, about a month and a half away, so... Um, but let's get into the actual trailer. Now, the first shot that we actually see in the trailer is of, of the Mandalorian ship, his spaceship, and it's flying through space. And if you if you look at it, you can actually see that the the back end of it is is open. The bay door in the back is open, which means it's been decompressed. Um, the lower deck has been decompressed to some extent, and one of the engines appears to be not operating at optimal efficiency, so it's kind of just like sputtering along, which means it may have been in a fight recently or something like that. We also see another uh, segment later on where he, uh, the Mandalorian ship is being flagged by two X-Wings. Now, that could also be in relation to this scene as well, um, but... The planet that he's flying towards in that opening shot is more interesting to me because I it might be Yavin 4. Um, and I think this would be the first time that we've returned to Yavin 4 since A New Hope, since, since uh, the first Star Wars film. Um, I don't think we've, we've gone back since then, at least not in terms of the films or in any of the, the, the current media. We, I think they, they might have gone there in uh, maybe some of the television shows. Um, but as of right now, that's a familiar location, which we really didn't see a whole lot of in Season 1, and I was kind of glad about that. We got to see new and different worlds, and this, it seems like we're getting more of the classic worlds, at least for the most part, because um, we see that, and that could obviously be Yavin 4. It might not be, so that might just be on me, but we do definitely get a shot not long after that of a sand person on a bantha, um, and that is definitely Tatooine. Uh, so we're going back to Tatooine because eventually every Star Wars franchise has to go to Tatooine for some reason. Um, and during this whole the, the er, whole early part of the trailer, we're actually getting a voiceover, which is the same dialogue um, being said by the Mandalorian armorer uh, from Season 1 in, in uh, the final episode, which he explains that the Mandalorian has to bring Baby Yoda to go and bring him back to his people, which are the Jedi. Um, so we, that's kind of setting that up. And then we also get a shot of not long after that where the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda have landed on this planet and they're, uh, I think it's Rosario Dawson, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I know, I know early reports were that she was playing Ahsoka Tano. I don't necessarily know if that's the case because her character, if, if that is her, it doesn't look a lot like her, but it's definitely a Jedi. It's somebody who's wearing what appears to, or maybe not a Jedi, maybe a Sith for all we know. Or a dark Jedi, or something like that, a uh, variant. But they—it uh, appears to be somebody who's at least force sensitive, and they're wearing the traditional Jedi robes, and they're kind of they're. They're kind of obscured, they're kind of in the background, and then you see this shot of basically there's some people that walk by, and then the, this this character in the next shot just disappears. It's, she's just not there anymore. Um, and again, based on the face, I think it might be Rosario Dawson, um, but maybe that's where they meet her first. Maybe that's why they go there is to find her, because um, that would make sense. I mean, she's probably one of the few uh, Jedi that are left in the galaxy that we haven't you know explored, aside from Luke Skywalker um, and anybody that he's currently training. Um so it would make sense the minute that the Mandalorian would then go after her. And we get a couple other little shots. There's a lot of mixed shots in this, uh, various little action scenes that are kind of disjointed and not connected. We get a shot of the Mandalorian on a speeder bike. We get another shot of uh, you know, him flying on the jetpack, which is another thing to note, actually, when you look in different parts of the trailer. There's some scenes where he has the jetpack. And there's some scenes where he doesn't. So it might be one of those things where maybe he takes it off and leaves it in the ship or something like that when he doesn't need it. Um, not like a Boba Fett thing where he's uh, he's carrying it around all the time. The other thing is, again, we don't see Boba Fett in this at all. They keep that completely under, uh, they completely off the screen, which I think is a good idea. We only get that one, uh, the, those couple of shots there of Rosario Dawson and nothing else. We know nothing else about her. We don't see anything else. We don't even see her with the hood off. So, again... 
I think it's a good idea to keep that. We do get one small shot of Gina Carano and Carl Weathers. Um, that are, They appear to be on the same planet that we left them on in the first uh, season of the show. Um, so we have that, and then we also have uh, a few of these other smaller shots where I guess they're on an ice world at some point. They show actually a fair amount of different planets, which I think is a good idea. I think you definitely need to have new places to go. Um, I do have a little bit of speculation. It's possible the ice planet could be Ilum, since that was kind of a, a very big, you know, force-sensitive planet because of all the kyber crystals. So, could be Ilum. That would be kind of interesting to actually see that in a movie for once, instead of, you know, just, just having it in cartoons and extended media. Um, so, I, I'd like to see that, but, I mean, aside from that, you know, Tatooine, we've seen, we've, we've been there, we've seen that, we've done that. Yavin, if they're actually going back to that planet, I think that would be interesting, because, again, we haven't really seen that a whole lot in the lore, except for uh, the stuff from A New Hope and maybe some television stuff mixed in. Like I said, I'm not as familiar with it in the television mythos as I am in the films. Um so then we, we go down, and at the end of the trailer, they have this little showdown. And the showdown is really good. It reminds me, actually, a lot of the bar showdown at the beginning of the first season of The Mandalorian, when he wrecks all those guys, and he cuts the dude in half with the door and stuff. Um, and basically, he walks into this area where it's kind of like a, an old-timey boxing match. Again, it reminds me a little bit of kind of like... Maybe not so much the Old West, but like turn of the century, like city, something like that. Um, or maybe like a back a back bar type of thing with the Old West. Again, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a whole shit ton of Western feels in this one, which uh, it's hit or miss with me. Um, I really do love Westerns, and I liked all the Western themes in the first season, so I really do hope they continue that. Um but actually, sorry, before I get to that last fight scene that they have, there's also some shots of stormtroopers. You hear what what sounds like an Imperial alarm. So, again, we know that uh, Moff, uh, Moff Gideon, who was the main villain at the end of the previous season, is coming back. Because, um, you know, he was teased at the end of the first season, and he has also the Darksaber. Um, so, there, there's a lot going on there. So, But, they again, he's one of those other characters they do not show in the trailer. So, I'm assuming maybe he's going to be like a looming villain, and he'll be kind of like tracking them down over the court, you know, tracking them down, trying to find them again, kind of like the first season, um, until the Mandalorian probably winds up taking him out. But let's jump forward again. Let's go to that last fight scene. So they're in this, like, little area, and basically he, Mandalorian goes in there to talk to somebody, and he brings Baby Yoda with him, and the, the, the person that he sits down to talk to, or the alien that he sits down to talk to, basically says this isn't a place to bring kids. And he says, wherever I go, it goes. He says, that's what I hear. And as soon as he says that, three other guys jump up and point blasters at the Mandalorian's head. Now, at the same time, uh, the Mandalorian, on his little gauntlet, he has the, uh, the little pins, the, 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 the spike missiles that shoot out. I forget exactly what they're called. Um, Fly, uh, flying sparrows or something like that. Um, but he has these little, basically, like, missile darts that he has that he can kill people with. And as soon as that happens, you see Baby Yoda just hit the little button on his on his little, uh, you know, floating orb baby carrier, and it just closes up and protects him while the Mandalorian proceeds to take everybody out. And then it cuts to black. They don't show you the action scene, which I think is a good idea. Uh, they just show you the aftermath. So you hear all this noise and this clanking and stuff like that, like people, like, hitting his armor or trying to shoot him. And then at the end of it, he throws this knife and hits a guy right in the chest and kills him. And then right before we go to black, he just goes, this is the way. Again, like the Mandalorians do, and then it cuts to Mandalorian Season 2, Disney Plus, October 30th, as usual. Um, so as for my thoughts on the trailer, it does not commit the cardinal sin of trailers. It does not give away the story in the trailer, which is a very good thing, especially for a television show like that. I'm not sure how many episodes this season will be. The original season, I believe, was eight episodes. Um, so hopefully they have that many, maybe maybe a couple more if the story expands a bit more. Um, I like the fact that they did not give away all the characters that they're going to be introducing in this season. I like the fact that they kept them under wraps to a decent amount. Um, and I also like the fact that we're really focusing on the main characters in this. We're focusing on Pedro Pascal and Baby Yoda. We're not focusing on all these other extenuous characters. The only ones that really pop up is we have some random random ones that really don't seem to have any sense. Rosario Dawson is in there for like a half second, and same thing with Gina Carano and Carl Weathers. Um, so I like that. And then the, the, the only thing that I really don't like is that we're going back to, to Tatooine. It's like everybody goes back to Tatooine. 
I, I can't keep going back to Tatooine. If you're going to do that, just base a series on Tatooine, and then everybody can get all the Tatooine they want. I, I don't really care anymore. We've been there so many times in so many movies that it's it's so pointless to just go back. Um, and again, I, I, I understand the idea because Star Wars fans are so familiar with that planet, but it's just, no. I, I, I can't invest in Tatooine. All the other planets, though, seem relatively interesting. I'd like to go back to Yavin because we haven't spent a lot of time there. Um, and if we go to Ilum, that would be really awesome, too, because I've never seen that in a live-action format before. So, uh, like I said, but, you know, th those are just my thoughts. I want to know what your thoughts are on the trailer. As usual, I'm going to link it in the description below if you want to watch it. But tell me what you think. Did you like The Mandalorian Season 1? Are you excited for Season 2? Do you think, like I did a little bit, that maybe this thing is a bit rushed? Um, but, you know, or have you already seen the trailer? Do you like the trailer? Do you not like the trailer? Put your thoughts in the comments below. As usual, I like to read them. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you...